Up until the book Heretics of Dune, the most powerful weapons that we knew of in the Dune universe were the atomic weapons that the great houses of the Landsrad had agreed to reserve just in case human beings ever needed to face off against a non-human threat. But when other humans came returning from deep within the cosmos, this all changed. This video will contain spoilers for the entire Dune Saga. Sometime after the year 15200 AG, the planet Arrakis, home of the Great Worms, the first source of the spice Melange, was hit by the weapon. The device, which was given the name Obliterators in Sandworms and Hunters of Dune, was brought into the Old Empire by the Honored Matre's Sisterhood, who had come out of the scattering seeking Bene Gesserit's secrets. The Honored Matres had hoped to destroy the Bene Gesserit source of spice by unleashing the power of the weapon upon Dune and eliminating the sandworms. The Matres had also been enraged that the Bene Gesserit Bashar Miles Teg had done harm to them previously. They intended to destroy him as well. The Honored Matres succeeded in destroying Miles Teg for the moment that was, but they did not succeed in destroying the Bene Gesserit Sisterhood's source of spice. But it was not because of the weapon's lack of power. The Bene Gesserit managed to escape with one worm before the power of the weapon was unleashed. The surface of the planet Rakis was scorched. When the Matres fired their missiles at Dune, the atmosphere of the world ignited, beginning to evaporate rapidly. All life on the planet was annihilated. The sand of Rakis melted by the intense heat caused by massive fireballs amalgamated into a structure of hard glass. The Bene Gesserit barely saved their worm, but the Matres intended to use their weapon again. Very little is revealed about the origin and the true nature of the weapon in the original saga. It is not until the expanded Dune books by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson that we learn more. During their time in the Scattering, the Honored Matre Sisterhood stumbled upon a remote outpost created by thinking machines. These were the remnants of the Machine Empire, which had not been fully destroyed during the Butlerian Jihad. They stole the Obliterators from there and destroyed the outpost, which alerted the larger whole of the Machine Empire. The Matres did not realize that the machines possessed an even greater weapon. As retribution, the machines unleashed the Scourge, a deadly plague. In Frank Herbert's book God Emperor of Dune, there is a reference to seeking machines who would hunt and kill humans. It seems to refer to an Ixian invention, but I suppose that you could potentially interpret it so that it could refer to the machine empire that appears in the expanded books. In the book Chapter House Dune, it is also mentioned that the Honored Matres feared a biological weapon from the Scattering which had, quote, made vegetables of them. This would explain why the Matres came back to the Old Empire seeking Bene Gesserit secrets. The Bene Gesserit could control their internal chemistry on a cellular level and likely would have been able to resist the Scourge. Personally, I've always been terrified by the thought of a biological weapon. It's not even something that's that far removed from reality. At this very moment, it is theoretically possible to engineer a super virus. A world scorching device is also quite terrifying, though in my opinion, not quite as much as the idea of the scourge. The obliterator device had limited power, and in a universe where humans have inhabited many worlds, losing one, while terrible, would not be the end all be all. But with the virus? Once it's unleashed, it would be near impossible to deal with. Sure, the Bene Gesserit could resist it, but most humans could not. The only hope would be for infected worlds to cut off contact with all other worlds, effectively leading to a dark age. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe for more ideas of Ice and Fire. 
I am super excited to announce that I've been working on a graphic novel slash comic book, Tadia. If you want to learn more about this series, click the link in the description to get put on my email list. And I will keep you guys updated as the development of this project continues. I've been working with Mike Miller, who has worked with George R. Martin in the past, and Image Comics, and a bunch of other comic publishers. And I'm just super excited to share with you guys this story that I've created about mythology and stories and magic. 